when Matt stood outside of his house, he looked at Rife and instructed him to follow in silence and to stay out of sight until he called for him to appear. Looking at Matt, Rife suddenly got the feeling this was about more than an invitation to dinner. I thought you said your mother was okay with me coming. She is. So why do I have to be quiet? Why can't I walk in the door with you? Having played the scenario over and over in his mind since getting off the phone with his mother, Matt was ready for these questions from Rife. It is okay with my mom, but I didn't talk to my sisters, and I want to make sure they were decent before we walked in. I thought you said they were getting ready to eat. Why wouldn't they be decent? I can tell you don't have sisters. A woman loves to get comfortable after a long day, but they still want to be beautiful if company is around. Oh, I get what you mean. No problem. I'll wait out here until you call me. As he unlocked the door and walked into the living room, Matt couldn't help but smile when he looked into the dining room and saw his sisters looking like starving bag women gripping chicken legs. Hi, honey. Your plate is in the microwave. I see you're by yourself. No, I'm not by myself. I just wanted to make sure everybody was decent before I brought my friend in. Suddenly, the girls and their brother were locked in a stare that filled the girls with a feeling of impending doom. Matt looked from one to the other, and a slow smile curved the corner of his mouth. Vet and Nett looked from each other to Matt and back and wondered what he had up his sleeve and which one of his friends he had with them. They both knew all of his friends, and bringing one of his friends home would not cause him to act like he was holding the trump card. Something was going on, and they knew they were not going to like it. Denise was watching the exchange between her children with quiet amusement. She knew the children thought she didn't know about all the pranks and practical jokes they were always pulling on each other, but they were wrong. She knew, but she just chose to stay out of it and allow them to work it out amongst themselves. She also knew the girls were always getting away with more than they should simply because Matt had a soft heart. By the same token, she also knew one day Matt was going to get even with his spoiled, devious sisters. And judging by the look on Matt's face, it looked like tonight was going to be the night. There were times when Denise was tempted to intervene, feeling in her gut that one or the other of the kids had gone too far. But just when she thought things were getting out of hand, they called a truce and everyone retreated to their neutral corners. Yes, the kids all had their moments, but she also knew deep down inside they really loved each other. Oh, sometimes they tried to play hard like they didn't care, but their actions spoke louder than words. She remembered the time when Matt was having trouble with the bullies at his school. She had to do everything in her power to stop the girls from getting involved and possibly getting hurt. And then there was a time when Vet had broken her leg. It was so pitiful to see her thumping around the house with those crutches. But she didn't have to want for anything because her brother and sister were right there at her every beck and call. And when Nick was having a hard time in school and there was a possibility she might not pass her grade, Vet and Matt studied and tutored her for hours on end, determined not to let her be left behind. Needless to say, she passed her class. No, her children were not angels, and they had their moments, but they loved each other in spite of what others might say when seeing the pranks they played on each other. There was no need for intervention because as far as she was concerned, there wasn't a problem, and she felt that as long as it wasn't broken, there was no need to fix it. Deciding to continue to play dumb, she kept her mouth shut and settled back to enjoy the show. The girls were staring at their brother so intently, one would think they could see right through him, and he was enjoying their discomfort immensely, 
maybe a little too immensely. Denise could almost see the wheels turning in the girl's head as if they could bore into their brother's brain and see what he was up to. Suddenly, their uncanny connection caused them to zero in on the same and only possible conclusion at the same time, and they looked incredulously at their brother and in unison said two words, you didn't. I did, answered Matt, and looking outside, beckoned for his friend to come in. Before either girl could yank the scarves from their head or run from the room to hide their frumpy attire, the object of their recent attraction entered the room. Mom, this is Rife, a friend of mine from school. This is my mother, Mrs. Jones, and you know my sisters, announced Matt with great pride. Hello, Mrs. Jones. Thank you for inviting me to have dinner with you and your family tonight. Hello, Net. Hello, Vet. Nice to see you again. Rife couldn't remember the last time he felt so nervous. What was wrong with him? The girls both felt like the world had come to an end and wanted to die, or at least to disappear, suddenly conscious of their appearance. They looked from Rife to Matt and back, and then turned to look at themselves before looking at the boys again. Girls, don't be rude. Aren't you going to speak to your brother's friend? Hello, Rife. Excuse us, they said, as they left the room and retreated to their bedroom. It's a pleasure to meet you, son. Welcome to our home. Maddie, come on in, and after you boys wash your hands, fix your company a plate, and you boys sit down and eat. Your sisters probably went to fix their hair. I'm sure they'll be back to finish their dinner shortly. Matt was on cloud nine. Everything went just as he had planned. If anything, it went even better. He showed Rife where he could wash his hands and set about preparing his plate. Rife wasn't sure what was going on, but he was sure he had been used and he was sure he didn't like it one bit. The look on the girl's face meant they had been humiliated and he felt betrayed his new friend had used him as a tool to cause that humiliation. All the way to the house, he had pictured a look of surprise and joy that would be on the girl's face when they saw him and almost couldn't get to the house fast enough. After what he had been through, he wished he was anywhere but here and couldn't wait to be on his way home. Afraid his leaving would make him more embarrassed than he already felt, he decided to stick it out, but vowed to have a word with Matt the first chance he got. Denise knew exactly what was going on, but as usual, she chose to stay out of it, knowing it was a retaliatory act of Matt's that was going to cost him dearly in the future. This young man must mean something to the girls, and Matt knew the girls would not be their usual perfectly groomed selves and picked this time to bring him home to embarrass them. Imagining the fury the girls must be feeling right now made Denise laugh to herself. These kids were something else. And just imagine, she was going to get three more. She looked up and sent a silent prayer to her father. Lord, I'm definitely going to need a lot of help and a double dose of patience for this job. As the boys came to the table, she looked at a very confused looking wife and raising her glass of soda said, welcome to the Jones family. Respect prevented Rife from confronting Matt in front of his mother over the obvious misuse of their relationship. So he just looked at his friend's beautiful mother and said, thank you and smiled. Denise determined she wasn't going to embarrass this poor, uncomfortable young man any more than he already had been, so they both finished their meal in silence. Matt, however, seemed to be having a great time and was quite the chatterbox, even though he was the only one that seemed to be in the mood to talk. Outwardly, he seemed to be very relaxed, but he actually felt like he was sitting on a time bomb that was set to blow any minute. 
He wondered if he had gone too far with his retaliation, and from the look on Rife's face, feared he had alienated his new friend. He hoped he could get Rife to understand why he did what he did because he actually really didn't like him and was looking forward to playing with him on the school team. But he also knew that the silence of his mother didn't mean that she was unaware of what was going on, just that she chose not to intervene on either one's behalf. He also knew that she would continue her silence throughout the retaliation of the girls against him whenever and however it came, as long as they didn't destroy the house, hurt or embarrass each other in front of other people, she usually remained neutral. But this time, Matt had a sinking feeling in the pit of his stomach she was going to have to intervene on his behalf. So to cover the growing feeling of dread that was churning in the pit of his stomach, Matt continued to ramble on and on about the events of the first day at school and his and Rife's triumph on the basketball court. When the meal was almost over, Denise excused herself and instructed Matt to clear the table, clean the kitchen, and after his company had gone, to see her in her study. Yo, man, what's your problem? His wife angrily as soon as Matt's mother was out of earshot. What are you talking about? Man, I'm not stupid. I know what you did and I don't appreciate being used. Your sisters are never going to speak to me again because of you. I thought you were my friend. All right, all right. I admit I was wrong for using you, but I had no choice. What do you mean you had no choice? See, my sisters are always doing things and getting away with it, and I've been waiting for a chance to get even with them, like, forever. So when I found out they saw you earlier and you acted like you kind of like them, I thought I could finally get even with them. I know they are going to kill me. And I admit, I didn't stop to think about your feelings and I'm sorry, but this was an opportunity I just couldn't pass up. Well, guess what? I don't have anything to do with all that. And from now on, I don't want to have anything to do with you. He said angrily as he got up from the table, went to get his jacket and books and preparing to leave. Hold up, man. I said I was sorry. What more do you want? I want you to apologize to your sisters in front of me and let them know I had nothing to do with this whole thing. I can't do that. That would give them the upper hand over me, and I can't let that happen. Then I'm out of here, and you can forget about me coming to your church or playing on your team. Okay, fine. I'll apologize. You happy? I'll be happy when your sisters know I didn't have anything to do with what you, with what happened tonight. I'll walk you to the bus stop, and then I'll tell them when I get back. I'm not leaving until you straighten this out with your sisters. And by the way, you were talking early to me about being Christian, right? Well, it's not very Christian of you to do things like this to your sisters in front of strangers. First of all, I know my sisters. And I know they are not going to speak to either of us tonight, trust me. And second, this has nothing to do with being a Christian. It's a family thing, and I shouldn't have involved you in it. So if you want to back out of the team, it's up to you. I'll tell my sisters this whole thing as soon as they are speaking to me again. That's not good enough. If I wasn't in your mother's house, I'd bust you up for something like this. You don't know me like that, man. And you're lucky I have respect for other people's houses. I'm out of here. Wait, you're right. I stepped way over the line, and you have every right to be angry. Stay right here, said a very contrite Matt as he walked to his sister's bedroom door and knocked softly. Who is it? It's me. I have something to tell you. Get off the door. I want to apologize. Get off the door. You don't have to open the door. Just listen. Get off the door, Matt, or we're telling mom. All right. You don't have to yell. I'm getting off the door. I just wanted to say Rife had nothing to do with this whole thing. It was my entire fault, and you're not the only one mad at me. He's leaving now and wanted you both to know he had nothing to do with it and said if I didn't clear this up before he left, he wasn't going to play on the team. 
So I'm letting you know it wasn't him. That's all I wanted to say. And I'm getting away from your door now. 